Hi everyone! In a previous video we've done my Mac Studio unboxing. Now in this video, let's connect it. It's gonna be few steps until we get there. So let's open up the boxes, see what's the inside and prep everything. Then we're gonna have a look at my desk and make space for the new monitor, which is 34 inch ultra wide screen. We'll connect iMac and the Mac Studio, which is here behind me with Thunderbolt and migrate uh, the software. And then at the end of the video, hopefully everything works. So we can then put the arm on the desk and the monitor on the arm. Right, let's get the screen out, the monitor, put it on the sofa, and for now, we're gonna mount it on a stand. We got some accessories. Get this out. This is part of the stand and we're going to need it for now. Put it on the arm at the very end when I'm certain that everything's working fine. I don't wanna risk it. This is the main bit of the stand and we got the screen there. We've got everything out. Let's connect the extension. I got the new extension. I've got another one under the desk. However, remember with Mac Studio, I need to have another plug for the monitor. With iMac, you only have one plug and unfortunately I've run out with all the equipment. So let's do it first. It seems like it's working. So we can get to the next stage. And that's clearing the stuff off of the desk, making the room for the big screen and for the Mac Studio. And then we'll see how we can migrate all the stuff so I don't have to install it manually. Because we can put it on the sofa, I'm thinking let's put the stand together and then mount it so the legs, they can be hanging off of the sofa. I think it will be fine. So let's do that now. As you can see, the stand is massive. There's no way this could fit on a desk. That's why I bought the arm. But for now, for the migration, let's use that one. Uh, we got a couple of HDMIs, USBs, DP in, DC in, and another USB, so power. We got headphones as well. I will be connecting through mini USB because of the refresh rate. We need to make room somehow for the screen to connect Mac Studio to the iMac. Maybe if we can move the iMac to the side and then screen at the top and do it this way. I've plugged the Mac Studio and the screen to the extension and I'm using the display port to USB-C cable. And that's because even though I could connect the monitor, the big screen behind me to the Mac Studio via HDMI, unfortunately in the Mac Studio, you only have HDMI 2.0, not 2.0. Point one. And with 2.0, which I don't know why they didn't put 2.1, if I connected via HDMI, the refresh rate on the screen would be up to, I think, 60 hertz or something like that. But if I do display to USB-C, then I can go up to 144 hertz, if I'm not mistaken. Let me connect it first, and then I'll explain a little bit more about the migration process and how I want to do it and then we'll see if it works. So, I've connected the Mac Studio to the monitor. I haven't turned it on yet, so I don't know if it's working yet or not. We migrate the stuff from my iMac onto Mac Studio. So I don't have to manually install every single application, the plugins, the Pro Tools, everything. Couple things. One is that I work from external uh, SSD. So if we can zoom in, in here, 
you can see two drives there. They're connected via USB-C. And one is my main drive that I work in. It's the SanDisk. And another SanDisk is for my music libraries. And that means that I will not need to copy my main working drive. So my sessions, uh, my documents, and my uh, libraries. These are libraries for native instruments, Spitfire, Omnisphere, etc. So this will save us a lot of time. What I want to migrate is my settings and the applications. If we have a look on the YouTube, so that's the official Apple support video. And they tell you how to use migration assistant. Now, what I've researched is that this will take hours and I think I need to transfer around five or 600 gigabytes. There's another way that we can do it. And this is transfer between two Macs using target disk mode. So I've read this on Apple and also I found a video, it's by Kiran Konathala and the video is called Mac OS migration to M1 MacBook Pro using Thunderbolt 3 cable in target disk mode 4K. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my Thunderbolt cable from the Apollo Twin X because it's a Thunderbolt equipment, connect the Thunderbolt from the iMac to the Mac Studio, then turn my iMac into target disk mode, unplug my SSD drives, pair my keyboard and mouse, because these are from the iMac, pair them with Mac Studio, do the initial setup, you know, the Wi-Fi, uh, the account, what have you, and then hopefully start the migration assistant and using Thunderbolt cable migrate the stuff from the iMac, which should be about three to four times as fast rather than doing it via Wi-Fi. This room in particular, it's in a bit of a blind spot as well. So I rather try doing it this way with the cable. Hopefully it works. I'll see you in a second. As you can see behind me, the screen is working. I couldn't work it through the front USB-C, so it needs to be connected at the back. This one, as you can see, is connected and it's in the target disk mode. First issue solved now. I couldn't connect my mouse and keyboard and it kept asking about just switch it on and off. That wouldn't work. So what I done is I got the cable. So it's the lighting cable to USB and then connected the keyboard at the back and here for two seconds and then the mouse and it switched. So it's working now. Hopefully I uh, can now set it up and then start the migration process. Okay, so we got it working, but it wasn't without issues. The first time I've booted the Mac Studio and set up the language and the territory, it started with the migration assistant and then the Mac rebooted itself. And I had to again set the language, set the territory, United Kingdom, etc and start the migration assistant again. When I started it, it showed me all the options, said continue, continue, continue. The screen appeared and it got stuck on preparing the files to transfer or something like that. And you, the line just kept going, 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 going nowhere. So I hit cancelled and then continued with setting up the Mac Studio on its own. So I set up new account until the main screen appeared. And then what I done, I've looked for migration assistant, booted the migration assistant, and then tried again with the connected old iMac, selected all the information that I wanted to transfer, and uh, it looks like it is working. If you look at the speed, it's about 200 megabytes per second. So. The connection via Thunderbolt is working and it says it's gonna be one hour and 12 minutes, which for 500 gigabytes, I think this is pretty, pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that, go downstairs, do some stuff. And then after we've transferred the information and then I'll check if it's all okay, then we'll finish this video by putting the screen on the arm on the desk. Hi again. 
Well, it seems that the process worked. Even the folders on the desktop are there. There's some stuff in a downloads folder. And there's a folder with relocated items that I'll have a look. It's because it's a different system. I had a Catalina on the old iMac, this Monterey, and also it's the new M1 thing. I'm wearing different clothes because during the time the migration process was going, an hour, I've done a quick workout. So no time was wasted. But now what we want to do is switch that one off, the iMac, switch the new one off, and then try to put the screen up on the arm, connect it with my Apollo Twin X, and just see if I can uh, start the pros, start the session, and if everything is in order. Also, I'll be checking if uh, the SSD drives are working okay, my latest sessions, and so on. Okay, uh, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than I thought, but uh, I got the parts out here on the floor. We've got instruction manual. So we start with the clamp base installation. So that's the clamp base. We've got to install it at the desk and then we add the monitor base, the one with the USB cable. I don't actually know if I'll be using the USB at all, but because uh, I'm using the uh, display port, but we'll see, we'll see what we, what we get there. Okay, let's start with the base. Okay, so it was a bit of a pain to get behind the desk and now I'm tightening the screws with the Allen key. You can see the base is very sturdy. So now we're looking at mounting the arm. The lower arm is in. And now we're looking at the final bit. I'm mounting the faceplate onto the screen first. On the manual it says to mount the faceplate onto the arm first and then attach the monitor, but because of the size of the screen, it'd be, I assume, fairly uncomfortable to be holding the screen and trying to fit it. So what I'm doing is we'll put the face play onto it first, and then one of us will be holding the screen and the other will be trying to fit it according to the instructions. And then we'll see if it works. The monitor is sitting nicely on the arm. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on the camera because it was a two person's job. I don't know how you can do it <laughs> just by yourself. You can move it up and down there and you, you regulate the, um, the tightness with the screw. And you can also manipulate the tilt on the side of the arm. As you can see, I've also hidden the cables. There's two slots, one on the upper arm and one on the lower arm. So that sits nicely. And now I will try to position the screen between the speakers and just kind of work it out. Well, I think that's not too bad. Although I do think I'll have to tilt it a little bit more up, just at an angle. Next thing in order is to put stuff on the desk, connect the Mac Studio to the screen and then see if everything works. As you can see, we are finished for the day. The monitor is on the arm, I've cleaned up on the desk and on the floor. And right now it's working fine. I need to adjust the tilt a little bit. Yeah, I'm installing some stuff, not all the plugins and software I'm using has the support for M1. So you've got to use the Rosetta, which is the, well, the software from Apple that allows you to 
use uh, the programs like Proles, for example, who still don't have support for M1. At the minute, I'm looking at it, not everything is working yet. Well, the files were copied, but not all my programs have uh, the support for M1. So I've got to install Rosetta and also update the software. Like at the moment, I'm downloading the latest version for my Apollo Twin. It should have the M1 support. Yeah, it's quite late now, so I'm gonna leave it, get back at it in the morning, see what else not working, what do I need to install manually, and then if my sound libraries from Native Instruments, Omnisphere and so on connect and link without any issues. But essentially, that's the setup. It's looking fine. I will have, of course, reviews in the future for the arm, for the screen, for Mac Studio and the rest of the gear. I might actually do another acoustic measurement because, yeah, nothing really changed except the screen, but still, I might do another one and save it as a new preset for the studio because this is how it will stay for foreseeable future. Thank you for watching this video. I know it was a little bit longer and sort of shot from the hand, but I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you later.